what makes the Innocence Project uh, effective is that it taps into something uh, very fundamental on a spiritual level that people understand. Uh, and that is this whole struggle that our clients and their families uh, engage in to overcome injustice. The Innocence Project and all 49 other Innocence Projects in our network and seven abroad of, uh, you know, have, have transformed the discussion in the criminal justice system. I mean, no one ever had any idea that there were that many innocent people in the system. No one. In your book, Actual Innocence, you talk about a time not very long ago when um, it was considered wrong to talk about a convicted prisoner as being innocent. How's that changed? There have been, you know, I guess we're up to about 265 uh, post-conviction DNA exonerations, but there are a lot of other exonerations during that period of time where people just said, oh, this is a false confession, this is a mistaken ID, this is junk science, this is uh, another problem case. And judges, prosecutors, uh, the press, everybody is more open to hearing about those cases because the DNA is demonstrated where no one can argue that this is a reality. So you see a transformation happening throughout the whole system. Each one of these exonerations is a learning moment for the criminal justice system. And every time you know, that an innocent person gets out, we always try to call the attention of uh, uh, the citizenry to what was the cause of this wrongful conviction and what can we do to prevent it. And this n doesn't just protect the innocent from being convicted, it helps law enforcement catch the real perpetrator. It enhances the capability uh, of police and prosecutors to do the job right. You talk about the fabric of guilt, that is, the things that add up to wanting a guilty plea. What are the factors that make up that fabric of guilt? Is it uh, indifference of the legal system? Is it the media? Is it race? Well, it's all of that. I mean, uh, so I don't think that you can uh, uh, overlook the fact that, you know, so many of these factors, you know, interrelate with each other and create a, uh, a, a serious problem. But we're now beginning to tear away uh, the fabric of false guilt. And you have to do that in, in, a, in a, an intelligent way, in a systematic way, uh, in a meaningful way. It, when the book is written on the Innocence Project, is the first part going to be about keeping, getting people out of prison and the second part going to be about keeping people who are innocent from being charged. From the very beginning of this project, we understood that this was transformative, that this was a learning moment for the whole system because never before have so many innocent people gotten out of jail. So you have to go back and ask what went wrong and how can we fix it? Just as we do with uh, the National Transportation and Safety Board goes back and looks at airplane crashes and train derailments and tries to figure out what went wrong and how can we fix it in a systematic way. You were at Cardozo in the very early days. What was its mission? What was its, its goal? First of all, a lot of students that were beginning second careers. We had a lot of women in the class and a lot of people who had done something else and then were coming back to law school to do something new. And we had a very young faculty. And the faculty has always been comparatively young, uh, very high achieving, you know, a lot of great scholarship that's come out of this faculty, you know, far uh, in excess of its uh, initial ranks over the years. Um, and, uh, you know, that was uh, uh, the kind of institution uh, that was created. You know, if you had a good idea, right, just go do it. Recently, I got to watch the two-week ITAP program at, Car at Cardozo. It was fascinating to see the transformation students go through. You came up with that. Tell me about the beginning of ITAP at Cardozo. You know, we started that uh, intensive trial advocacy program, uh, you know, sort of based on a, a, a fairly uh, well-known model. And, you know, this is like an intensive environment where you really teach people um, how to do a trial from beginning to end. We had the vision of bringing in, you know, the very best teachers. Uh, and there were some other schools uh, that were doing it uh, at the same time we were doing it. But, you know, frankly, we had an enormous advantage in that, first of all, within the New York metropolitan area, uh, we have some of the greatest lawyers in the world. And from the very beginning, 
uh, we brought in uh, superstars from all across the country because they enjoyed spending a week with uh, this you know, wonderful group that we created. Uh, you know, they just enjoyed each other's company and it was exactly the same program, arguably even better in terms of talent, that many of the major firms would routinely send their lawyers to participate in. Uh, so my God, you know, it would cost them you know, a few thousand dollars uh, or more to send associates from the very best firms to these NIDA programs in Boulder or wherever they were holding them. Uh, and you know, you're a Cardozo student in your second or third year, you can get the same thing. What do you say to the Cardozo students who work at the Innocent Project when they're coming in? And what do you hope they get out of the Innocence Project when they leave? Well, what we tell the students, first of all, this is a law firm. Uh, as well as an educational environment. So it's both. That's what the classic clinical program should involve. Um, so we're going to teach you a lot about doctrine, how to read cases, how to write, uh, how to litigate. We're also going to teach you about fact development and problem solving. We're going to teach you about overarching uh, 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 vectors that make the system what it is and how you can improve them. We're going to teach you not a small amount, frankly, about uh, science uh, and social science, whether it's the psychology involved in eyewitness identification problems and false confessions or the hard science that goes with DNA and serology and uh, so many of the other related disciplines that you need to work our cases. Uh, but you're also going to see how we move uh, with the press, um, with the public, how you have to organize campaigns to get innocent people out. Um, and how you have to you know, spread a message in a, uh, a concerted and meaningful way to policymakers and the public. All that they see within this institution. You know, so it's a very serious place in that regard. Um, but it also has got a great spirit to it, a great idealism to it. And what we really hope is that when the students leave here, whether they become prosecutors, defense lawyers, uh, bankers, uh, intellectual property experts, uh, you name it, they become everything, right? Uh, they will come back to the experience they had here.